Okay, so hello everyone. So today I'm gonna try to read the chapter for chapter four, like uh, NumPy basics with arrays and vectorized computation. But as you know, I think that when you read this chapter, you I think that you will find that this chapter is a uh, very very long and contains a lot of information about the manipulation of the data set especially for the numerical data set. So I personally think that I'm going to divide it, this chapter into the two parts because it's a too many contents and I cannot cover all entire contents uh, within one hour. So because our book club is, uh, you know, kind of understanding the contents better rather than the kind of like, uh, try to quickly skimming through the, all the chapters, right? So. I personally think that sure, sure, sure. yeah, this one, this chapter is uh, too long, and then I think that we I'm gonna divide it, this one into the two parts. And also, when you're looking at the appendix, I think that when you go to the book website, you will also find that uh, there is an appendix for the advanced numpy. That is also contains a lot of information and uh, also very useful to understand the numerical. Data, anal data manipulation and data analysis in Python. So I personally think that maybe we it would be also good idea after the covering the chapter four, we gonna maybe we gonna cover the appendix A, like advanced numpy. So I think that that might be much better for us to to understand the numpy num uh, what is what numpy is you know in more detail and in you know, for data analytics so Abdul, i think that if it would be much better maybe after i read uh, i i read the uh, chapter 4 i'm going to try maybe we can schedule to the append uh, covering uh schedule to cover the that appendix a like yeah. the Western NumPy, yeah, and then yeah. I think that if you yeah if you can, if you can cover that appendix, right after the chapter four, maybe it would be much better for us to, yeah, to understand understand these contents much better. So, I yeah, personally think not? that why not? I'll yeah. try to I'll read it and uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So in here, so when you see the our schedule. Uh, could you could you see the our schedule, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So I'm gonna create the four column, and then <laughs> this numpy four and a and. Uh, And okay, and then like this, and maybe if you can cover this one, sure, sure. I'll 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 retweet. Nice, no, still a lot of time. Yeah, right. This. What do you yeah. think about that? Yeah, I think this this makes that, sense. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think this makes sense. Yeah. Do you think you can you could you could you do that? Yeah, I'll, 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 read, I'll, I'll, of... I'll, I'll read the appendix. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Got you. Thank you very much. So yeah, today yeah. I'm gonna cover. Yeah, I'm gonna cover about the uh just first to have first the part of the NumPy basics. So, okay, so let's start. So as you can see here, maybe I think that you can see the two screenshots. One, one is the, my coding, my maybe my Jupyter notebook, and then the other one is my book, the book uh, screenshot. Yeah. Can you see that yeah, clearly? Yeah, 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 it's a bit, uh, I think the, maybe the book if you expand it a bit. Oh, uh, okay, hold on. Let me try yeah, to make it bigger. Fine, yeah. yeah, this is fine. This is fine? Yeah, this is fine. Mm. Okay, got you. 
So in here, so as you can see here, the NumPy, you know, as you can say, it is called the numerical Python. It's the very, very critical foundation of packages. It's critical when we try to do the data analysis because uh, this book, you know, in here, it is a Python for the data analytics, right? So actually it's the subtitle is the pandas and NumPy, right? So NumPy is the, one of the, one of the key packages we have to understand when we try to conduct the data analysis in Python. So what is the NumPy do is the actually NumPy create, NumPy actually creating the, what is called the arrays, like a NumPy arrays to, to manipulating the, especially for the numerical data set. But it does not mean that the, it, it only cares about the numerical data set. It also, have created arrays with a string or some of the Unicode, which we recover later. So anyway, so this one is actually about the arrays. So when we try to looking at the arrays, actually in R, in R also has the array and then also matrices. I think that when when the when we say about the arrays in Python, it is quite similar about the Open on matrix at the same time at the arrays. So arrays act in in Python arrays actually have a, a characteristic of uh, both the arrays and matrix in R. Okay. So here's the things we can try to do. Is uh, one thing is an uh, ND array, which is the try to multi dimensional array to providing the fast array oriented uh, operation. So what is say when we say about the ND arrays, the N is the N dimensional array. That's the, what this one is about. So it is actually ND array, like a multi multi-dimensional array, how we can create that one, and then how we can manipulate those things. Mm -hmm. And also how we can try to do the many uh, Mathematical functions using the array and then reading the writing the array data, which is the, this one going to be the second part of the uh, uh, this chapter, and also linear algebra, also the second part of the thing. And then the C API is the more advanced kind of a data analysis and then connecting to the C and Fortran kind of languages. All of the, these two are going to be covered in the next week. So it is the second half. Okay. So today in the first half, we're gonna cover these two. Okay, just basically how we can creating the these multi-dimensional arrays and then how we can conducting the mathematical operation and functions by using the these multi-dimensional arrays. Okay. Yeah. So in the most data applications, we're gonna try to focus here is the fast array-based operations, like a big data mongering and cleaning and subsetting, filtering, and also plus, plus, plus slicing. Maybe subsetting is also pretty similar to the slicing because the slicing is uh, just try to extract uh, some, some, some data set from the larger data set. So subsetting and slicing is a quite similar kind of term, but yes, anyway, so subsetting and filtering and transformation which when we say about the transformation in here, we actually, one of the example is the maybe transpose, like a, like a rotating the that arrays, like a matrices. And also some common array algorithm, like a sorting and unique and set function. And also descriptive statistical data alignment and conditional logics and group wise data manipulation, like aggregations, and transformation, those kind of things. So actually NumPy actually providing the, the all of the, these kind of function and then all of the, these things are related to the data manipulation. So, so this is a, a basic introduction about the, how NumPy is about, okay? And then what is the good thing about the NumPy is the NumPy always actually use the much less memory, which means, uh, which means computer, it is not the computer intensive kind of process. That means even if we have a very, very larger data set, 
maybe converting those data set as an array and then manipulating those data set as a NumPy array or maybe pandas gonna be save our memory, which also allows us to the conduct a analysis or data manipulation much faster. Okay, that is the, what is the good thing about the NumPy. Okay, so so NumPy operation as you can see here is so faster kind of a regular R regular Python code because when we try to some of the um processing the some data set maybe in basic Python code maybe we tend to rely on to the for loop to 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 conduct the similar function of the NumPy array. But the thing is a for loop actually is the, this one is actually very computer intensive. Intensive process, which means it takes a long time. But when we try to converting our data set and then looking at the data set as an array in NumPy, that actually saves a lot of time. So as you can see here, we can import the NumPy as an MP, which is the another another name for use in here. And then when we try to creating the 1 million kind of a kind of a data set with the array, which this one is the array. And then the second one is the just kind of a calling the this 10,000, uh, 1 million data, uh, data as a list, just kind of a simple vector list. And then when we try to do the simple calculation, like a multiply by two in here. And then this time it is uh, try to calculate the time to learning this code, okay? This code, time it. And then when you try to looking at the, these two, you can find that the, this one is the microsecond. This is the millisecond, which means this one is a much larger unit compared to the, this one. That means dealing with uh, this kind of uh, operation by using the array saves a lot of time compared to the dealing with the same operation as a list, okay? That's the, what this one says about the Rather than the using the for loop, we can try to do the even simple simple mathematical calculation tells the differences. Okay, like in here, like generally ten times or a hundred times faster, more than their pure Python counterparts like a list. At the same time, significantly less memory gonna be spent, so we do not have to worry about the memory problem for the larger data set when we try to deal with the data set as a way, okay? So NumPy ND array. So let's talk about the, this one because this one is a very simple data attribute type of the num, uh, used in num, uh, NumPy. So it is called a multi-dimensional array object, right? Here. So what is the key feature in here is the, we can create in the end when whatever dimensional array object gonna be created like an ND array, which is very fast and flexible. So as you can see here, we can import a NumPy as an NP and then a MP.array, which is the design the objective oriented function by calling the array. And then we can creating the these two as an array. So when we try to print the data set, we will find that the this, the first line, this is the first row, is the 1.5, negative 1.1, and 3.0, right? And then a uh, second one, like a second row, is the 0, negative 3.0, and then a 6.5. That's the how you can create in the array by using the MP array function, okay? And then you can write in the mathematical Things like a multiply by ten means it all. Yes, it's, look, it's, it's just like a, yeah. it's a, a two by three metric, something like this. Yeah, yeah, right. It, it is like like this negative point one. Yeah. Right. 
3.0, and then 0, and then negative 3.0, and 6.5. This one is the 2 by 3 matrix, Yeah. right? In this case, maybe when you try to multiply by 10, that means like this. Right? Yeah, very scared. Mm. Yeah, and then uh, multiply by this color value. And then uh, this one gonna be multiplied by each mm. element, right? Yeah. Like this. And then that gives us about uh, this kind of outcome, right? Mm. And then also we can try to try to adding the those both uh, those two things in the multiple times, which is the this. So it's a very simple characteristic about the metrics in the mathematics, right? So you can thinking about the arrays as a a kind of a matrices, okay? When we only deal with uh, this kind of uh, only two dimensional kind of kind of uh, arrays, single arrays that actually work like a like a matrix in the mathematics way as we know, okay. And then also on any array generate the multi dimensional containers like a homogeneous data set like uh, all the elements must be the same type. That means like uh, when you try to do the do the data dot shape, which is another function that actually gives us about the dimensions of the that matrices. So we have uh, two rows when you're looking at the, this data up to the top, two rows and three columns, right? That's the how shape is about. So what's the row and what's the number of row and number of columns in the, our data? And then the D time means is a float Float to 64, that means actually whenever you have a data set in here, it follows about the more general kind of a data types. In this case, we have actually the similar part. So that actually reason why we can actually say about the float to 64, like a positive and negative at the same time, we also have a decimal value. So that's the reason why data type is the float four. So that uh, to represent the general type of the numeric type of the dead matrices. Okay. So, and also again, in here, creating the ND arrays, we already see in C, this one, how we can create the ND arrays above. We can use, as we can say, we use the array function. So we, by using the these functions, we can actually define that one. So in here, when you're looking at the, this data one in here, it is actually just kind of a simple list right now. But by using the array functions, you can actually define this one is now array. Okay. It's the convert. Right. And the array actually converts to the list uh, list to the array in here, like an array, and uh, so it is a it is a it looks like a similar, but in this case, but definitely data type is different. Okay, and also in here we can also have uh, this one is a uh, kind of a what is called a list of list because within the this big list. There is a two elements in here that to each element also organized as a list, right? So that means a list, each, each element is the list, but that list also nested with another list, right? But rather than the using the this one, by using the array functions, we can easily define about the this list of the list function. And then that actually saves a lot of memory, computer memory, and then an operational or mathematical function can be easily conducted when we using the array functions. Okay. And then we can try to inspecting the our our matrix or array structures by using the n dimensional. So n dimensional means and D means how many rows we have. And shape is actually give us the, the full 
full kind of a, a structure of the matrices. In this case, there is a two row and then a four columns. In ending functions only gives us about the row, the number of rows we have in our, in our matrix, okay? So in here, it says, unless explicitly specified, that means actually try to infer the good data type for the array that creates. That means whenever we did not, we did not classify the, our data set is about, that means our data type gonna be determined based on the most common type that represents the our data data type more easily. Okay. That's the reason why. Because uh, in here we actually define the flow to 64. That's the reason why we have uh, this kind of a decimal number. Like this. Right? Because uh, it is a float float. Uh, numbers, not the not the integers. If we try to do the integer from integers, maybe there might be the no dot in the in the array. So in here, mv zero means mv zero and then the number of row and column means we actually creating the matrices with the uh, uh, that contains the, all of the zero within the that matrices. And then the an empty function also has the same thing. But the thing is, uh, you should be very careful when you try to do the, this kind of a, what is called a three dimensional matrix or arrays. How this one is look like is like this. Here is the first matrix. Is then there is a three by three, right? And then all of our zero. And then what the two in the latter part means we have a, this kind of matrix is, is the two with the same, same numbering, okay? Zero, 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 zero. Okay. Like a like a two 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 matrices. Like a two layers. This one is actually example of the three dimensional uh array. How we can deal with these kind of things. Okay. So uh, that's the how how these things and then do you have any questions so far? Uh, no, it's it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna continue. Well in here we also try to do the same thing for the that A range function, which is the this one is the A range function is the M numpy kind of functions that creating about the single single I would say single array, single dimensional array. Did actually this one actually produce about a single dimension? A single maybe I would say array. That's the reason why we got the these all of the these outcome in here. Okay. All right, and then as you can see here at the top in the table, you will see about the what kind of a uh, multi-dimensional array functions we can we can use whenever we creating the our uh, our data set. Okay, yeah, just uh, just uh, look through the all of the, these things slowly, because uh, array is the defined uh, array, right? Which is the these are the most widely used the function we gonna do and also arrange gonna be the another functions and then an empty function is also quite useful because whenever we need the empty array function to be defined and then assign to the value later on maybe we can also sometimes need to be creating the empty or empty like or full function with a specific number 
and also identify. Like uh, identify matrix. Do you know identify matrix is right? Right? Identify yeah. matrix is kind of like a like this. One zero like the, zero one, Ident like a type sorry, of identity yeah. or sorry, identity or identify. Ident ident uh, identity matrix. Yeah, identity. Sure. Yeah, the, it the, is the, the diagonal I. is it's, it's one. Yeah. Yeah, it is the diagonal value is always one, or maybe maybe one zero 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 one zero 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 one like this, and also it is always the same row and same uh same color like a square uh, matrix. Yeah, yeah, it's crime matrix, yeah. And by Yeah. So that's the identifying matrix is about, okay? Because uh maybe just kind of a small algebra uh, matrix algebra is IA, like uh, whenever whenever you have uh, a uh, matrices, you can combine the identity matrices, it gives you A, right? It is yeah. also same to same to the A multiply I. It is also try to do the upside down kind of function, right? So that's the what that's the basic kind of a matrix. Cause sometimes maybe when you try to do the matrix algebra, you sometimes leading to the these kind of things, and then try to testing to the 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 functions. So that's the how identify matrix is about. And then data type for the ND array is kind of a but what what this one is about is by using the what is called the excuse me d type here right we can we can that we can define the how nd array numerical type is about okay it's an integer 32 float 64 etc okay let me let me give you the one example about the how you can do this so in here, maybe AR, ARR1 equal MP array and 1 and 2 and 3 and D type equal, equal, you know, when we say about the flow to 64 and then when you try to do the ARR1, you can easily find that the, there is a one period, uh, there is a uh, next to the number, there is uh, always period in there to to represent about the it is a float function with the whole potential decimal gonna be it. Maybe when you uh when you try to do uh when you try to do the another array, maybe array two equal mp array and same thing, one and two and three. But right now, when you try to try to do the D type, uh, D type equal like a uh, uh, int uh like a integer thirty two, and then AR two you will see that there is a differences, right? It is an integer, so there is a no period, like a decimal point gonna be have, gonna be generated in this case. And also you will find that the, when you're looking at the book in here, right? And then my code is a slightly different because it is also the same thing, like uh, you can also write in this one, like a D type equal just single quote, is int32 it is also the same thing okay rather than the using the mp dot float 64 you can just simply simply try to do the uh, to the int32 as a single quote okay that also give you the same and then when you try to do the aar1 to e type is the flow to 64 AR and then uh and then when you when you try to do the AR2 D type is the INT32. So it's the same, okay? 
So that's the kind of a data types, and then you can define all the these things. And then when you're looking at these tables, it says about the data type. So in here, it's a 8-bit and 60-bit and 32-bit and 64-bit is a kind of a, what is the difference of the, these things is the, in case of the 8-bit is the like a 2-8 kind of a integer can be represented. Rep, uh, you can represent, you can actually have a range of the, of the two two power by eight, or uh to the to the negative two. I think that this so, what the two uh two point eight is about like a two power by eight. Hold on. Uh, two by eight is the two hundred two hundred fifty six. Like two hundred fifty six, uh, I think maybe I think that what is the difference about the, these bits is the kind of a, the range of the integers you can and each each data type can cover. So that's the main difference about the, these things. Okay, and then also same thing about the floating 16, 32, 64, and one hundred twenty eight, like a floating point, and then. And then single precision point, floating point, etc. So anyway, all of the these things are the kind of an integer. Integer, and then these are the all of these things is the float. Okay, and also we can have a complex kind of a number. Okay, and then boolean like a true or false. And then an object type, which is the defined by the Python objects. Sometimes you can use the this one, but maybe maybe not. Most of the cases you may not define the these things. Maybe sometimes in mathematical purposes, there is a, some way you can define the your own objects to the calculation. And then and then also define the string and Unicode. Okay. For the character, for the text or character uh, data, data manipulation. So it also contains the string and Unicode, okay? Not only the, the numeric value. So that's the, how you can define the data set and it's also the same thing, because whenever you want to looking at the, the what kind of a data type you wanna you have in the your array is the a a s type method gonna be the good one like a as a s type in here. That is actually converting to the your floating type. So in this case. My AR, AR, AR2 actually have an integer, right? Right now. But, but the thing is, you can actually try to do another one for the float ARR equal, like a ARR2 and as type and just float 64. And then, uh, and then when you try to uh try to looking at the dev float a uh arr to the d type you will find that that's the float four float 64 because you actually converting to the that a arr to d type data type into from the integer to the float right do you understand what i just said like I try to convert yeah, yeah. your data set. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, and it's, also, it's quite clear. Yeah. 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 And also it's the same thing about the whenever you have a string function in here, right? All of these things are the string, right? And then you can actually this string converting this string into the float in here. Like this. Like uh like uh nums. Maybe I think long string and MP array. 
and 1.2, maybe negative 3.9. Yeah, I just uh, dividing maybe 6.7. And then D type equal MP string in this case. Okay. And then right now, drum string D type is S4, like uh, in here, S4, right? Yeah. So, so why, why is the S4? That means when you're looking at the negative 3.9, we have uh, three different characters in that function. So maximum length, length of the that string is the four, right? Negative sign three and period and nine. That's the four spaces, right? Four character spaces. That's the reason why we have a S4 as a that time. Okay. And then now you can actually convert into the that one as a kind of a long string, right? As type and load. Whenever you do this, you can see that array gonna be the uh gonna be the float, right? Okay. That's how you can converting to the string to the float, etc. Okay. All right. And then when you're looking at here is also the another another example about the uh about the uh d type attributes and then as you can see here whenever we have uh this one so in here what is the this one is about is okay in in this case when we try to type the this uh, np or range and 10 this d type is actually i integer right there is no floating. But in this case, when you're looking at the calibers, this one actually defined about the floating 64, right? But what this one actually means that uh, when we, we wanted to see the, that INT array, uh, array, array uh, variable as a type for type, as a data type with the same as the caliber caliber data type. It is a kind of a in in when you try to do the Microsoft Word, do you know about the format painter? I'm sorry. Do you do you it is about the kind of a copying 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 the data type, okay? Because when you're looking at the, this caliber, this caliber actually have a float 64 as a data type, right? Yeah. And then INT array actually have a INT integer data type. What, yeah. what this one try to do is we want to see about the INT array, which is the integer data type. But the thing is now we want to convert in that integer data type as the same as the same as the data type in uh, of the caliber. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's the reason why we have a point in here. Because uh, it is a float. Right? Because yeah. uh, initially, initially we have a, uh, we actually call the, we actually define the INT array as an integer in here. And then uh, we actually set up another variable called the caliber as a floating 64. And then uh, this final line, the last line is a kind of, a, we wanna see the integer array, but the thing is the data type should be the cal same as the caliber data type, which is the copying the that data type into the, when we try to show the, this INT array. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, it is a kind of a format painter in in Microsoft Word. Okay. Mm. Are you familiar Just... with the Microsoft Word? Yeah, format painter. Formal Painter? No, not familiar with the Formal Painter, but I am some kind of familiar yeah. with Microsoft, but not Formal Painter. Yeah. Hmm. Well, maybe, okay. Maybe I think I can. You will understand what I'm saying, maybe, when I try to do this one. Okay. Can you see the my word? word? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I will... Say, I will say, I will type the, this one, maybe. Take it. Maybe, uh, maybe some of the A, B, C, D in here. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then I actually make a bold and italic size and, uh, uh, and underline, even underline. Okay. Mm. Okay, and yep. then now I have a EFGH at the bottom. I wanted to copy the this style into the here. What I can, how we can do? You can locate the cursor in here. There is a format painter in in here. Oh uh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. You can click that one, and then when you dragging that one. It converting, it converting oh. to the same oh, style. Oh. Mm. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's the how I I would say about the uh how it is about one when I say about the format painter is this one like a copying the dead data type, adapting the dead data type into the when we try to show the INT array, okay? Mm. Yeah. So that's the kind of things. Okay. And then now there is an arithmetic uh, with the NumPy arrays. This one is actually very simple. Like uh, we can actually multiply and subtract and then divide it by one, like uh, converting, reversing. This one is a power. And then also compare, mm -hmm. compare to the two matrices, two arrays, okay? And then yeah. try to show the Boolean functions. So when it's we compare, very simple. Like yeah. When we compare, the, the, the output should always be in the, in, in, in like a, a Boolean form set up. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Yeah. And also basic indexing and slicing is also the same thing as uh, when we try to looking at the list function in the previous chapter. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. whenever we have an array in here, this one is actually, when we try to do the zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right? It is one by 10 matrices, right? And mm -hmm. then, Whenever we have a, this one, the this one is actually zero, one, two, three, etc., and then nine. This one is an index number, right? So yeah. when we try to do the AR five, that means one, two, three, four, five, uh, three, four, five in this one, right? based on the this index number. Mm. And then uh, this one means we can try to show about the five greater to the five and then a less than eight. So eight is not included, okay? So that means five, six, seven gonna be show up. Okay, in this case, all right? And also we can when we try to assign to the five to five to seven index number as a value is a 12, that means we got the all the 12 in here, like a five, six, seven. These are the index number. 
right? And also it is also said about the array is actually highly mutable. Not immutable, it's a mutable, okay? Mutable means it is uh, able to the updating the value, right? So that's the how basic indexing and slicing. And also when we try to looking at the uh, slice, we can just uh, define to the we where we wanna which which cells we gonna be we wanna to slice from the larger one, and then uh, when we try to do the array is a twelve. And also when we try to do the a uh, slice one is the one two three four five, that means this one gonna be changing to the one two three four five. That's the reason why in here. But what is the what is the interesting about when we looking at the here is add slice is uh, you think like uh, in R this one is actually totally different from the A A R R with the original array. But the thing is, whenever you changing the your uh this slice variable, that also allows us allows in Python the original data set also change. In here, yeah, 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 yeah. Because the uh, mutation is uh, reflected to the array or original array ARR. Yeah, okay? yeah, yeah. Yeah, we already covered this one in the previous chapter, right? Because mm -hmm. uh, it thinks it seems like uh, we actually creating the separate variable in here as a ARR, ARR. But the thing is in Python. Python actually recognize about the, this one is uh, just kind of a, uh, just kind of a view, view of or some of the partial view of the original array. Okay, that means the original and and this one is actually linked together. It is not the another independent separate variable. It is actually the same linked variable. They are connected to each other. So that's the reason why when you're looking at the discussion in here, you will find that if you want to copy of a slice in the ND array instead of the view, we have to do the this one and dot copy here. Okay. I'm gonna show you about the why this one is about, okay? Uh, in here, okay, let's say about the ARR equal MP array range 10. And then when we look at the ARR, we have an array like this. Right now, when we try to slice like uh, ARR 45.8, and then ARR slice, we will see array five, six, seven, right? And then when we try to do the assign to the different variable into uh into the like 12, and then ARR, uh not not like this, okay. Uh ARR slice like this oh hold on i think that i got a wrong five six eight then uh no no i'll say about the arr five to eight equal 12 and then when we try to look, looking at the air slice you will see the you will see the all 12 gonna be the show up, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. And then another thing we also try to do is uh, like here, like a uh, AR slice and one, like a six, we will say one, two, three, four, five. And then when we're looking at the ARR, oh, uh, what's happening here? 
Okay, hold on. Then Uh, it should, maybe you, you call the art slice or yeah oh yeah here right yeah maybe instead of the it. number six it is says one two three four five in arr because uh, slice and arr is actually connected to each other right mm. so whenever you have changing the slice ARR AR original arrays is also changed because they are the actually mutable kind of a relationship. Okay. Yeah, it is very confusing because uh, compared to R, in Python, they, the, they, the way they actually delimit these kind of data sets is uh, a little bit slightly different, as you can see here. So we have to familiar with uh, how this one going to be changed. But the thing is, Maybe if I can try to do the slice two equal ARR, okay? 5.8 dot copy, okay? Mm -hmm. And then when we try to do, when we looking at the, this one, okay, ARR, Uh, uh, right here, right this. You can see the five, one, two, three, four, five, and seven right now, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, when we try to changing the then one, two, three, four, five into the maybe six, the original one, and then when we click the dead one, it's still in there. Yeah. Do you because, know the difference? Yeah, because we did yeah. the changes with the copy. The, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, copy means it is actually creating a separate array, which is the not not linked, not linked with ARR, like uh, the original original uh, or the original array. That's the reason why. Okay. And then, even if we can try to change the dead one in six, AR is still in there because the uh, slice two, AR slice two and AR is the now diff now separate, not linked together, because uh, we actually using the copy function. Well, so that's, that's, that's the useful, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's the what caution is about. Okay. And then now this one is about the about the how we can try to call the multiple arrays. So when you try to create a, this one, it looks like a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right? And then a, what array two D dot two means we this one is actually indexing row one. And row two, uh, row, row zero, row one, row two. And then this one is the column zero, column one, column two. So only two means that this one is actually row number, row indexing number. So that means we have a, we, uh, the seven, eight, nine gonna be show up as an array. Okay. When you try to designate the one specific cell, you have to do the zero and two like this, or zero comma two, like a, like a, uh, like a seeking some kind of a, some kind of a coordinate kind of a things. That means zero is the number of row is the zero here. And then second one is the in here. So three gonna be show up, which is the three in here. That's the illustration about the, this one. Like, a, like a, you, you can actually this cell as a kind of a coordinates with the row and column, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's the same thing. So this one is a 3D array. 
three D array array is also the very same things, like a like a like a uh like a three dimensional kind of a matrix, like this. And then uh, there is uh, another matrix is in the in the like this. Okay, two matrices, two layer of the matrices. So you can actually see all of the, these things like uh, X and Y and Z kind of things. X, Y and Z kind of kind of things. Okay, that's the how this one is about. Oh. Oh my God, it's already three, three, already one hour has passed. I didn't even to, to move to the 4.2 yet. Cause it's a too many information in here. Yeah, yeah, too much. Cause uh, too I, many I, things to be covered. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of things. But but I think the main concept, yeah. it's, it's, it's fine because the, the examples are very, yeah. like some kind of straightforward, yeah. Okay, all right. So indexing with the slices is also the very same. Like uh, just kind of, uh, you can just think about the indexing zero, one, two, three, four, five, et cetera. And then you can just uh, start offsetting the, those things by using the, this kind of indexing number. It's also the same with in R. And then, and then also as you can see, these kind of uh, things is actually still connecting to the original array. So that means it is a still kind of updating to the original kind of a variable, right? That's the only thing you have to keep in mind. And then expressions in here is kind of like, uh, how you can find out the those uh each elements about the as an expression and shape. Okay? You will easily figure out what this one is about. Okay. Yeah, yeah. They, they, even the the, yeah. the 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 picture makes it very easy even to grasp. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh I think that I'm gonna stop here because I already prepared for the four point three. But hopefully, I think that I'm gonna try to speed much faster in the next next week, and then I try to explain the all of the these things as quickly as possible okay yeah, yeah i think i think i think the examples are clear maybe just the yeah. the main uh, uh intuition yeah. then yeah yeah i'm gonna try to summarize the whole of the main yeah because because if you want to go through yeah. all the examples then it will take a lot of time <laughs> yeah yeah right yeah okay, if you go so, through all the examples it will uh, take a lot of time yeah so okay so right now let us stop here today yeah uh, good